As we've covered multiple times on this channel, leverage is one of the most powerful tools a property investor has. But you know what? There are some situations where buying with cash can be the real power move. So in this video, I'll cover three situations where buying with cash can have major advantages. But make sure you stick around to the end for a warning about a situation where many investors come unstuck when they're trying to make use of cash. So the first situation where cash can be your friend is grabbing a hot deal. Because when speed matters, cash really can seal the deal. A seller who's in a rush will always favor a cash offer because they'll know that anyone who's using a mortgage will take months to complete and situations can even come up with their lender that will cause them to back out completely. So in a hot market where there's multiple bidders and lots of competition, using cash can be the way to get your offer accepted when other people's don't. And in cooler markets where there isn't all that competition and sellers are keen to get a deal done with certainty, cash can secure you a healthy discount. So cash in this situation is about speed and certainty. One situation where of course speed and certainty is always of the essence is at auction. If you're buying at auction, cash is pretty much always mandatory because there just won't be time to secure a mortgage. Remember though, sellers will always accept a cash offer given the choice, but most of the time speed isn't the key factor for them. So understand the situations where cash will make a difference to either your ability to get the deal or the price you get it for, and those where it won't, and save your cash for those situations where it is, so you're not tying it up unnecessarily. Another situation where you might want to use cash is if you're adding value and refinancing. If you want to buy a property, add value to it and quickly obtain a mortgage at its new higher level, then cash is the easiest way to buy. You could buy with a mortgage, but there are a couple of drawbacks to doing this. So the first is that there's likely to be an early redemption penalty to pay, so that'll add to your financing costs. But perhaps the more important factor is lenders don't like it. So even if you're taking out a tracker product rather than a two, three or five year fix, it's still intended to be a long-term product. So if you take it out and then repay it six months later, lenders aren't keen on that. And you might get away with it the first time, but if you make a habit of it, that could not only cause that lender to turn down your business in future, but flag you up to other lenders as well. You could instead use bridging finance, which is intended to be a short-term product, but it's very expensive. So cash is the easiest and cheapest way to make the purchase, add the value, and then go for the mortgage. Bear in mind though, that you might still need to wait until you've owned the property for six months before you can apply for a mortgage. This isn't the case with all lenders. So if you think this is something you're going to want to do, speak to a mortgage broker first to see what your options are likely to be so you don't end up in a situation where your money is stuck for longer than you expected. Also, of course, when you go for a mortgage of any kind, there is no guarantee that the valuer is going to agree with your valuation. And this is a particular risk if you appear to be trying to get a mortgage for a much higher level than you bought the property for recently. So you need to be prepared to demonstrate the value that you've genuinely added, but also be prepared for the fact that you might not be able to extract as much of your cash as you expected. The third situation, which a lot of people have taken advantage of recently, is to use cash to sit out mortgage mayhem. Because let's face it, the mortgage market has not been a fun place to hang out over the last 12 months or so. It appears that rates have peaked, but they're only falling slowly and product fees are still very high. So if you found a great long-term purchase, but you don't fancy locking yourself into a high rate for multiple years, you could buy with cash, then switch onto a mortgage when conditions are more favorable. This is, of course, a gamble. There's no guarantee the rates will come down in the short term. So you'll need to be able to either live with current rates if you're forced to just take out a mortgage at that level at some point, or have your cash tied up for much longer than you originally expected. It's probably smarter to only use this approach to sit out points where the mortgage market has a particular blip. Over the last year or so, there've been a couple of occasions where the market has been spooked by unexpectedly high inflation numbers, for example, which means that rates have suddenly spiked and the number of products on the market has fallen as they get pulled off the market to be repriced. And on those occasions, that situation's only lasted for a month or two before it's settled back down again. If you find yourself committed to a purchase or the perfect deal comes along while the market is in the middle of one of those blips, it could be a good move to use cash just to avoid the issue and mean that you're not locking in at an unfavorable rate and you can wait till things are settled down and get yourself a product that you're much happier with. But whatever the situation, remember the golden rule of buying with cash if you think you're gonna to want to refinance later, which is before you buy, 
check with a broker that you will be able to obtain a mortgage on it at some point. You don't want to be stuck with your cash tied up indefinitely. And there can be non-obvious aspects of a given property that mean mortgage options will be limited. A broker won't be able to tell you for sure. And of course, the market can change in the future, but they can give you a good indication. And they can rescue you from situations where their experience tells them that future financing could be more tricky than you think. And you will want to take out a mortgage at some point even if you're sitting on piles of cash. And there's even a strong argument for avoiding paying it off or even paying it down for as long as possible. It might sound crazy, but watch this video next where I explain why the most sophisticated investors love being in debt and staying that way.